Now, thanks for staying with us. Movies are really powerful. Even though it's called the seventh art, cinema is surely the most influential art form. Most people don't follow sculpture or architecture and don't get affected by new sculptures or buildings. Movies, however, are everywhere. So many people see movies every day and the film industry is so big and influential. However, movies can affect society in both positive and negative ways. They can help the economy grow, inspire individuals and expand our basic knowledge of the world around us. Now today our goal is to understand how Nollywood is changing how we act as a people and how they are influencing our global image. Now remember you can join this conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Way Show Africa one with the hashtag Ways or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038 Sanzi, I'll come I'll come to you first before I come to Mori, because both of you are all in the movie <laughs> space. <laughs> now you are an actor. Yes. Right. When you see Nollywood mm -hmm. and you see the Nigerian image, you know, how do you rate both i think that um nollywood as of between 2018 or would i say between the past decade and this uh new decade that we just entered there has been a lot of improvement but most importantly between let's say 2017 to right now there has been a lot of positive changes and we see a lot of that in better production value I can't say the same for originality, although there are a couple of people changing, you know, um, changing the status quo. You have people like James Omokwe, you have Mo Abudu, you have um, um, Femi Odubemi, and uh, of course, um, um, multi-choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are investing a lot in movies and other film distributors. So there is a lot more structure. However, it doesn't change the fact that there is a lot to be done. We still need to get that structure um, together, mm -hmm. but um, quite frankly, I can't complain too much because I know where we're coming from, and right now there is huge development. There is less scandal, um, in as much as we still get um, bits and bits of it here and there. But there's just there's been an impressive growth. I'm not going to lie, there has been. There are other challenges, but I'll leave it for much later during the conversation. So when I was reading about Nollywood, you know, mm -hmm. I mean Nollywood is quite um, quite big, right? You know, and we've really grown in terms of um, in terms of financial numbers, mm -hmm. you know, I suppose when they just started. And I, I think even what we said earlier about um, people in the celebrities, I'll call them, that call for help all the time. I think it's even the olden days, the, the old generation of celebrities that would do that. Because right now, I think Nollywood has really, really evolved. It's become a lot more corporate. It's become a lot more structured in terms of, yeah. especially when we started taking our movies to the cinemas so the cinemas and all of that so it became a lot more lucrative for um, the actors however um, I am of the opinion that at this point where we're at in Nigeria yeah. as a country Nollywood is not doing so much you know they are in not changing the status in changing the, society. the narrative I watched this movie Contagion Contagion is like an, a, an exact replica of coronavirus when you watch that movie, you know, because mm -hmm. they were talking about, I mean, the, the symptoms, everything, you know. So when you watch movies in Hollywood, it almost like paints a picture of what's going to happen in the future. What is the picture that Nollywood is painting currently for us here in Nigeria? You I know? don't think. And so are we just, you know, are we all about feel good um, movies or what exactly are we about? Um, I think, Maury, would you like to talk? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have Maury. <laughs> okay, so um, I do agree with you that right now we are focused on more feel-good feel um, productions. Yeah. And yes, they are high quality and they are entertaining. But when it comes to passing across a message, I don't think that we are doing a great job. I mean, they are fantastic movies. I love Sugar Rush. I love, um, um, some of them are satirical as well. <laughs> Um, for instance, Your Excellency, it's a hilarious <laughs> movie, but you get the, the message, the undertone. I liked um, Fourth Republic. Fourth Republic is such a beautiful movie by Ishaya Bako, and I think it's just... 
it's so fourth republic i like fourth republic mm -hmm. right because for the first time and dry too those are now i'm there, now content. i'm coming there so you see fourth republic is amazing i loved the representation of politics you know mm -hmm. how they played that politics with Kate Henshaw. It was an amazing... It's a beautiful you know, film. Yes. The twist at the end, nobody saw it coming. I love the fact that, you know, they, they, are, they painted a reality of what it's our politics is like in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, for the movie Dry, Dry, um, Stephanie Linus was addressing something that had to do with, um, what's it called? That had to do with um, a core issue that is faced by young girls in the North. Mm -hmm. And after that movie, long after that movie had been produced, she is there's still a lot of awards that she's been getting on that movie not only that a lot of girls you know got free surgery now that is the kind of impact I, I am looking forward to because i don't think in nigeria where we are at right now i know we want to entertain we want to laugh we want to do all of that but is that what we need right now for our Nollywood, um, so for our actors to be churning out in the cinemas? Honestly, is that I, what I, we need in terms of content? I, okay, here is what I think. I think there needs to be a balance. There, we have, um, we need feel-good movies. Nigeria, sometimes Nigeria can just be too much. You need to laugh, right? So in that case, we need hilarious movies that just feel good. It's okay, Your Excellency, Sugar Rush, Wedding Party, all those films. Just laugh a little but i do agree with you to a certain extent that where the where we're getting it wrong is that we focus too much like 98 percent we focus on those feel-good movies forgetting the fact that there are other issues we're going through in the society that needs to be addressed and that's why um movies like um dry yes uh fourth republic and i'm um, trying to get guess other ones off the top of my head oh, that's why these movies we need more people making these movies not just to make people feel good but to pass a message mm -hmm. right to bring about a transformation in society and to frame mindsets as Absolutely. well like we have a beautiful movie that like wrecked the amvcs carried home a lot of awards mm -hmm. um, living in bondage and it's a beautiful movie. It's a remake. We love it. But what really is the story behind it? It has fantastic production, um, great actors. Okay, so great now directing. maybe the question I would like to ask our guest, probably when he joins, is: yeah. Is Nollywood here to tell us the already existing narrative, or is Nollywood here to shape a new narrative, to shape a new image? Do you understand what I'm saying? So living in bondage yeah. is almost like they painted an existing picture, right? They painted an existing picture. It's, okay, somebody is doing, is in a cult, and he has money and all of that, which is yeah. the, the, I mean, it, it's a popular opinion around, you know, that we have, okay, Yahoo Plus, we have a lot of people that do rituals and mm -hmm. money rituals and all of that. That is the current narrative of Nigeria, right? But are we here? to paint those kind of narratives or are we here to paint an, a, a narrative that is non-existent that we are looking that in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years, this is what Nigeria would look like? I think I would always say Fourth Republic remains one of my favorite movies. I think Fourth Republic addresses that. Fourth Republic shows you that it is possible it is for a woman. Possible. Yeah, it is possible for a woman and it is, it is also possible to get justice and that testifying, well, it, 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 it does... Let me not spoil the movie for the people that have not watched it. Oh. Okay, well, please <laughs> don't let tell me them the twist at the end. Please <laughs> no, don't. Let me not tell them, don't spoil it, because even that one also painted, at the end of the day, it also painted the narrative of what happens in our political scene. You know, we, we didn't see anything clean, you know, all of us. Mm -hmm. Well, but it's good to not live too much in, um, uh, in the fantasy. It's good to add a bit of reality. And that's Absolutely. What I, I feel that's what the ending did. Absolutely. I don't know if we have more because we've been talking and more. <laughs> is not there all yeah, right so Mori. okay so where so we, you, you've been hearing santi and i <laughs> i've not been hearing you i lost connection so i literally just came back all right so okay. what, what's your opinion about nollywood and the nigerian image let me even hear what you have to say well um personally i think like what you said like how you started it the images the messages that we pass actually go a long way in you know, how we think and we live our lives. And it's a good thing that today we're celebrating cats because I feel like where I am now, I'm, I'm with my cousin and she has a cat. And one of the major reasons why I hate cats is because of how Nollywood has shaped my yes. image. You know, I just feel like if I'm seeing a cat, that's somebody's auntie right there. That can be just, that's, oh my. that's a witch. Yeah. You know, that's, that's juju. That's just, I can never bring myself to loving or caring or 
petting a cat no matter how cute they look so in as much as it sounds like a joke it really actually goes a long way in how you know um our day to day lives are like so, yeah can right, i say so something I, about that so Demi, yes, please. <laughs> let me welcome our guest. Demi Okolawo is an actor, a creative entrepreneur, and he <laughs> is the head of distribution at Silverbed Distribution. Demi needs no introduction, but for the benefit of those who do not know him, he's a graduate of chemical engineering from the University of Lagos, a former baker and sales executive turned actor, an A-list actor for that matter, <laughs> after studying at the New York <laughs> Film Academy. Thank you so much, Demi, for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me over. So we have been yabbing your industry, or Nollywood. I've been, I've been listening. I've been listening. <laughs> so what do you think? And they're um, always so defensive. <laughs> All right, so Demi. Demi, so what do you think? Yes. I, I was asking Sanzi a question. I said, so Nollywood, as it stands today, it's almost like it paints a picture of our reality, of, of this is how Nigeria is, right? Is that, the, is that the kind of picture you th um, uh, Nollywood should be painting? Or we should be painting something completely different and far from who we are as a people? What's your take? <laughs> so um, I like that we're having this conversation, first of all. And, and thank you again for having me over. Um, I'm expecting, well, I, I expect that, you know, everybody's going to assume I'm going to come to defend Nollywood because I am an integral part of the industry. Yeah. Um, while I am not going to come and be on the defensive, I'm just going to tell it as it, it is. is. Yeah. Um, creative people have total and absolute license of how they use their creativity. I different people have different ideas of what they want to see in television or in films. Um, and so my, my perception is usually this. If you're really passionate about something, a message that you want to pass across, and you're a member of the audience, Please, there are several ways that you can be invested in the industry such that you can um, drive this conversation. As they say, um, he who pays the piper, you he know, dictates the tune. tune. So yes. if you come to us as an executive producer with a bag full of money, I promise you we will tell all the stories that you want to tell. So, and there are two things we need to note. Um, you will sometimes have to put up the image of what something is to get a reaction from people so they know where they should not be. There are other times, the second, the second aspect is that you're, there'll be times when you have to show them a better um, reality, so to speak. Uh, so there's the current reality and there's the better reality. And you will notice that quite a few films, especially in this, um, this era that we are in, yeah. you know, are trying to show this future reality that we want for Nigeria. I'm sure you've seen movies like um, Your Excellency um, that had uh, young politicians competing against um, older uh, politicians, mm -hmm. um, and and it just there was an element there of us trying to show this is the ideal. These are the kind of leaders that we should be pushing for. We've, mm -hmm. we've seen young politicians try to come out and realize that it's the young people who sort of bring them down. So Absolutely. perhaps it's time for us to start putting the image of young politicians in front of people, and we're doing that. However, we should also note that if we had done a film where it was totally unrealistic. People would disconnect from the film. They'll, they'll probably, as you know, they'll just turn off and be like, nah, this cannot be real. Mm. But and Demi, they, they get do, off that. Um, sorry to cut you, but I do have a question. Why is it, why is it that we are so quick to embrace uh, movies like X-Men, Avengers? We know this is Star Wars. This is complete Precisely. fiction. We're not going, going anywhere with this. it. And people like me would, uh, uh, Ni Akimolayon would come up with, um, I think his debut film, Kajola, forgive my pronunciation. And we all like July, yes. trash it. And nobody is trying to do anything sci-fi or fantasy because we're like, right. it's not real. But we embrace this in Hollywood. Why is that? So the problem wasn't so much that um, we were rejecting Kajola. Um, it was that we're so used to a particular quality of sci-fi <laughs> that anything other than that, we were going to reject. Okay? Yeah, I agree. Uh, so it wasn't about the filmmaker or his film. It was just that at that time, we didn't have what it took to give that quality of film. If today we're able to produce better quality, even look at our animations. Our animations are so are much better. better. Yeah, you I saw agree. Malaika, the Warrior True. Queen, um, from the same knee at Kimalaya. Fantastic mm. piece of work, went global. He keeps you know? So we're himself. getting better. There might be a time when we tell a, a story that is realistic enough, sci-fi story, that is realistic enough for Nigerians to embrace it. We may not 
have the budgets to go all the way. So we'll tell our stories in a way that it doesn't need all the sci-fi work in the world. You get me? Mm-hmm. So that, that's what I think about, you know, sci-fi and Nigerians not, uh, not being, not just open to taking on sci-fi that is less than the quality that they are used to. However, there are so many more stories out there that we can tell. Stories about the kind of politicians, the kind of citizens that we want to see, mm-hmm. you know, the kind of families and family values, the kind of, um, you know, just general principles that we want to teach people, young people, old people, and just re-engineer their minds. And you see a lot of the people who have come into the industry within this time, in this era, are mostly coming from the corporate world. Coming, I, I worked in... Um, a bank. I was well. It wasn't IT. It was not. It wasn't banking. It was e-commerce. So oh, I was e-commerce. in e-commerce mm. um, as the head of marketing. Um, but I always had a passion for Nollywood, and I put my money literally where my mouth is by quitting my job and getting into the industry. Mm-hmm. And from my position as an actor, I was able to influence certain things. And as I grew as an actor, I was able to start to you know have conversations about the kind of stories that I personally want to be involved in, and the kind of stories I want the people who I'm working with to sort of write. And now with my um, my current position as the head of distribution at Silverbird for Nollywood Movies, um, I'm able to even push further this narrative and say to producers, if you find me these kind of films, uh, these kinds of films, um, I'll be willing to take a chance to to put it out there, you know, to, to the Nigerian public. Uh, case in point, The Legend of Inikbi by Mercy Johnson, epic story, took us back in time. You see, that's another thing. We want to be able to tell our historical stories yeah. in ways that people can accept it. Mm-hmm. We've seen titles like Game of Thrones and how people embrace it all over the world. And mm-hmm. so we did Legend of Inigui, and it was a huge success in Nigeria. Um, and hopefully we're going to see it on other international platforms in the next few months. Absolutely. Okay, you know what, because uh, of the time, we'll go on a short break. When we come back, Mori will take a question, and since we ask more questions, please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 